Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we shall talk about uh, wave winding. Uh, there are different ways uh, to connect uh, the coils in the rotor to commutator segments. Uh, two most important uh, arrangements are lap winding and wave winding. Uh, in the uh, last lecture, we talked about lap winding. Uh, in case of lap winding, two sides of the same coil were connected to adjacent commutator segments. That is, we had this situation, uh, a coil, a coil with two sides uh, and uh, the ends of the coil were connected to adjacent commutator segment. That arrangement was called lap winding. Uh, in the case of wave winding, every second coil, the end of every second coil is connected to adjacent commutator segment. I repeat this statement. For the case of wave winding, for a four pole machine, the end of every second coil is connected to adjacent commutator segment. To uh, elaborate it, let's, uh, let's consider this machine. Uh, it has uh, four poles and there are nine coils placed over here. And corresponding to these nine coils, we have nine commutator segments and the connection of the coils with commutator segments is like this one. Okay. One is connected to uh, commutator segment A and two is connected to B uh, and then in sequence three is connected to C and so on. Uh, I have connected uh, one side of each coil and now uh, the uh, second side is connected like this one. One dash is connected to F. Two dash is connected to G. Three dash is connected to H and so on. So uh, one is connected to A, two is connected to B and so on. And then one dash is connected to F, two dash is connected to G, uh, and so on. With this arrangement, what we, we shall achieve, uh, let's draw the equivalent winding diagram for this, uh, connect, these connections. Please do it. Uh, so there are nine coils in the rotor. So we shall see uh, 18 conductors, 18 conductors. So we have uh, 18 conductors placed in the rotor. Uh, these are placed in a sequence. Uh, first, we have conductor 1 and adjacent to it is uh, 8 dash and then 2. So, 1 and 1 dash are two sides of the same coil. So, at the back end, these coils are shorted. Likewise, 2 is connected to 2 dash and so on. So, this uh, 8 is connected at the back end with 8 dash so since we have cut it open so this connection is not visible over here and 9 is connected to 9 dash on the front end these coils are connected to commutator segments there are 9 commutator segments so let me draw these 9 commutator segments so we have uh, these uh, commutator segments uh, 1 is connected to A to to B and so on and now one dash one dash is connected to F one dash is here it is connected to F and two dash is connected to G so these are connections of the coils to commutator segments brushes are placed uh, such that uh, for this uh, time instant uh, one brush is at this location and another br brush is at this location. So how to decide the location of brushes, where to pr place brushes, we shall also talk about that. However, for time being, just uh, consider that one brush is placed at this location in contact with commutator segment B and the other brush is placed in commutator segment, in contact with commutator segment H. So this uh, particular winding, uh, we can see that uh, uh, here 
uh, if you look at uh, this coil one, uh, this is coil one, and in series with this is connected is coil six, which is this one. And the end of the second coil is connected to commutator segment B. This is connected uh, to coil segment A and the end of second coil is com connected to commutator segment B. So the arrangement uh, in case of a uh, wave winding, so in case of wave winding for a four pole machine that is for this situation end of every second coil is connected to adjacent commutator segment. This is uh, the first coil and in series with it is this uh, coil and end of this coil is connected to commutator segment B. So this A and this A are the same, B and B are same. This was circular, we have cut it open. So this A, uh, one end, one coil uh, is connected to A and the end of the second coil is connected to commutator segment B. That is true for all the coils in the machine. Uh, we can also verify it, for example, for coil uh, this uh, one. Uh, this is connected to commutator segment B and the end of the second coil. This uh, is the first coil and in series with it is this coil, coil number 7 and its end end is connected to commutator segment C start is at B and end is at C so end of every second coil is connected to adjacent commutator segment and this winding is called wave winding uh, what is advantage of this winding so this winding compared to the uh, lap winding, this resolves the problem of voltage imbalance. How? How it resolves the problem of voltage imbalance? You remember, the in case uh, uh, due to wear and tear, uh, this uh, rotor can move closer to one pole and move away from the other pole. And due to that, in some conductors, uh, induced voltage will be larger and in other conductors, uh, induced voltage will be smaller. In case of uh, lap winding, uh, we can see that between two commutator segments, for example, uh, let's see uh, this first loop, between the two commutator segments A and B, two loops are connected, that is, between these two commutator segments, there are four conductors, this conductor, one, one dash, six, and six dash. Between two commutator segments, there are four conductors and one conductor is under each pole. Let's see it. This conductor 1 is under this pole, 1 dash is under this pole and this uh, one next in series is 6, 6 is under this pole and 6 dash is under this pole. One conductor is, uh, there are four conductors between two commutator segments and one uh, is under each pole. So if there is voltage imbalance, for example, uh, here we have slightly higher voltage and here uh, in this one dash we have slightly lower voltage. So ultimately the sum will be 4E. 4E. That is uh, in conductor 1 we have induced voltage E. In conductor 1 dash which is over here we have uh, slightly less voltage E minus. In conductor 6 we have uh, voltage E and in conductor 6 dash uh, which will move for example near to this pole we will have slightly higher voltage. So what is net sum? Net sum the voltage between two commutator segments will be 4E. This is true for all the coils. You can verify it for for example uh, these two commutator, the coils between these two commutator segments B and C. Hence, uh, this uh, wave winding resolves the problem of voltage imbalance uh, 
between two commutator segments, voltage is always 4E. So it resolves the problem of voltage imbalance. Uh, this was the situation for a, a machine with four poles, uh, which will be the situation for the machine with, uh, for example, eight poles. For the case of eight poles, every fourth coil, end of, end of, end of every fourth coil will be connected to adjacent commutator segments. That is, uh, between two commutator segments, there will be eight conductors. One will be under each pole face and hence again the total voltage will be the sum of uh, all these voltages and some of them will be smaller, some of them will be slightly larger, however their net sum will be uh, 8E. Uh, this uh, wavewinding has uh, certain additional properties uh, compared to uh, lap winding. So for, uh, for wave winding, there are always two parallel paths for current. You remember in case of lap winding, uh, the number of parallel paths for current was equal to the number of poles. That is for the case of a four pole machine, there will be four parallel paths for current. However, in case of wave winding, there are always two parallel paths for current. That is, uh, these machines uh, can handle small currents. There are less number of parallel paths for current so less current can be handled by these machines. Uh, there C is the total number of coils in the machine and P uh, there are always two parallel paths. So C by 2 will be the number of conductors, uh, number of coils in each parallel path. What is its implication? Uh, compared to uh, the case of uh, lap winding where you had C divided by P uh, coils in each parallel path. Here you have more number of coils in each parallel path. More number of coils mean the induced voltage that will be available at the brushes that will be larger. So these machines, wave wound AC machines, can handle more uh, uh, voltages. These are suitable for applications which uh, have uh, high voltages. So wave wound DC machines are suitable for applications uh, we are uh, to require low current and high voltages. Now uh, we are left with only one question that is how did I decide that uh, if uh, one is connected, this coil one is connected to A, then how did I decide that one dash should be connected to F? So to clarify it, we define some terminology. Uh, we define commutator pitch. So commutator pitch is the distance between commutator segments to which two ends of the coil are connected. For example, for this particular machine, uh, one end of this coil is connected to A and the se uh, second end of the coil is connected to F. So what is distance between the commutator segments to which this coil is connected? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So commutator pitch uh, for this machine is 5. Uh, commutator pitch is uh, denoted by the symbol YC. YC is 5 for this case. Uh, this is the same for all coils. For example, if you look at coil 2, one end is, end is connected to commutator segment B and the second end is connected to G. So distance between the commutator segments 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is commutator pitch for a lap wound DC machine? So for lap wound DC machine, uh, commutator pitch is always uh, 1. That is, the ends of the coil are connected to adjacent commutator segments. That is, this is the situation. One end is connected to this uh, commutator segment. The other end is connected to the adjacent commutator segment for the case of lab bone DC machine. So for lab bone DC machine, commutator pitch is always 1. For this particular machine, commutator pitch is 5 and here is the formula which can be utilized to determine commutator pitch for a uh, wave wound DC machine. Commutator pitch for wave wound DC machine can be determined by this uh, relation. Here C is the number of coils in the machine and P is number of poles in that machine.
Here we can use uh, either plus one or minus one. What is the difference? We shall also talk about the, that. However, over here uh, we we have used plus one. That is uh, for this case we had nine coils and plus one divided by how many poles? Four poles multiplied by two. So that came out to be equal to uh, five. So commutator pitch uh, for this machine came out to be equal to 5 and it can be determined by this relation. For example, if we have an 8 pole machine with uh, 19 coils, uh, then uh, the commutator pitch uh, to obtain uh, wave winding will be equal to uh, 2 multiplied by 19 coils plus 1 divided by 4 so 2010 in that case commutator pitch will be equal to uh, 10 uh, we can see that uh, this uh, uh, wave winding is not always uh, possible we have to ensure a uh, certain number of coils in that machine for example if we had uh, 18 coils in that machine uh, then that will not come out to be an integer uh, so to achieve wave winding we have to ensure appropriate number of coils in that machine. In the next lecture, we shall uh, briefly talk about uh, uh, different uh, variations uh, that are there in the design of real uh, DC machines. Over there, we shall also talk about this uh, plus and minus sign.